Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and or listening to the podcast and welcome to my house. It's time for another ServiceNow Store Highlights video. That's SSH version 0301. 2024. It's our first episode in March and we have 37 new or updated applications to run through in this episode. Let's look at the summary here. We've got four compatibility updates, eight fixes, only four highlights this week, seven minor updates, seven new releases, and seven release notes fails. I should probably play the lottery because that's three sevens in a row. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to play the lottery. But moving into our episode, let's knock out those compatibility updates. We have Bell Tech Logic Screen Pop, DeepL Translator Service, Spoke by TM Labs, HexAware Shift Handover Management, and Upgrade Assistant. All were that kept cool, can't talk compatibility updates to Vancouver. Uh, not Vancouver, did I just say Vancouver? To Washington, D.C. Um, I'm a release behind. So those were updates to Washington, D.C. There were also eight fixes. Uh, CSDM as code, Digicert, Trust Lifecycle Manager, Generative AI Controller, Microsoft Azure OpenAI, Generative AI Spoke, Onapsis Vulnerability Integration, Tanium CI Introspect UI, UXC Generative AI, and Vulnerability Response Integration with Order. O-R-D-R were all fixes, little small fixes to fix a bug or something like that. Then we had, speaking of small, some minor updates. 1E Core, Cisco Partner Smart Bonding, IRM State Net Integration, Omada Service Catalog, Recorded Future for Vulnerability Response, Serenity AI, and Tanium Integration Core all had some minor updates. Just some small stuff, not a big deal to spend a lot of time on in our highlights. And then last on the quick list of the quick hits is going to be our release notes fails. If you haven't seen an episode or listened to one before, a release note fail is that there were no release notes, repeated release notes, or references to external release notes behind a paywall or a login, so I can't tell you what's new or what changed in those applications, and so therefore they are a fail. That list for you is Cyware Threat Intelligence Exchange, or CTIX, Digital Shadows Security Operations Connector, Druva, Fujitsu WE, Guardrails, IBM Z Discovery, and Now Assist in a Virtual Agent Designer. And that brings us to the good stuff. We've got seven new releases in the episode. Let's knock out the first new release, which is going to be Aleph Alpha Spoke. Simplify and accelerate how you integrate with Aleph Alpha. Key features. Enables completions API with default support for luminous models. There are no screenshots. Let's just read the summary here, see if there's something more. Alepha or LF Alpha Spoke enables integration of generative AI capabilities from Aleph Alpha in the Generative AI Controller Store app. You can leverage the Spoke via the Generative AI Controller Store application. So this is using uh, the Generative AI Controller. And uh, yeah, so that's what's new. This is actually coming from the team at ServiceNow. Next on our list of new releases is going to be FMN Now Core. Provide service management and control services to a federated mission. FMN compatible Spiral 4. Key features. Core app for the provisioning of service management services and mission network mission networks? No, mission networks. There's an N, but I think it's an N. This app provides a subscription mechanism and the tables for the FMN service management processes like FMN Service Catalog Management. This is really hard to say these initials really fast. FMN Incident Management and FMN Event Management. They do have some screenshots on this application. Let's take a look at the first one. It's going to be an FMN Participant showing the participant, the participant incident, the connection information, and the services. And there's another tab in related list for incidents. And next up is a... Uh, is this a graphic or a landing page? I'm not really sure what I'm looking at. It's a graphic. I see graphic now up in the title description. FMN now sweet graphic with a K. Um, I wasn't thinking of graphic like that, but that works. And that is what's new from the team at Swisscom Schweitz AG. Lots of words I've never pronounced before today. Next up is also going to be from FMN uh, now Inc. Incident management for, okay, Inc. is incident. <laughs> incident management for federated mission networking compatible with FMN Spiral 4. Key features, incident management for federated mission networking compatible with FMN Spiral 4. We've got some marketing stuff, uh, FMN Now Suite Overview, um, the FMN and Incident Process Diagram, and the graphic that we had in the previous application, and that's it. 
Um, so basically just marketing and kind of informational stuff on this one. Also from the team at Swisscom, Schweitz AG. Let's knock out the next one. It's going to be FMN now SCM or Service Catalog Management. Provide service catalog management to a federated mission, FMN Compatible Spiral 4. Uh, key features, application to participate in federated mission to manage, consume, and publish federated services. Let's check out the screenshot slash marketing. So we got our same sweet overview as the other ones. Now we have um, a dashboard showing um, filtering going on for incident type, originator, owner, and incident incident something. Uh, and then it filters the incidents by owner and originator uh, stacked column chart. And then on the right hand side is a list view of FMN incidents. And then we have our graphic and then back to the overview. So a little bit more insight into that one. We've got one more to go here and that's going to be, oh, no, that was my last one. I apologize. I saw F and I assumed it was the same thing. This one's actually FSO institutional and business banking. Let your institutional and business banking customers interact in a digital, secure, and convenient way, reducing the time, cost, and effort involved in delivering corporate cards, merchants, and transaction account services. Key features, corporate and institutional and business banking service portal and service catalog, pre-configured corporate and institutional and business banking services, including corporate cards, merchants, and transaction accounts, save time and cost with transparent, repeatable processes for institutional and business account openings, updates, and closures, manage credit card services faster by streamlining and automating the common account requests, continually improve and measure internal business performance by applying analytics and process optimization, optional integration to core banking and origination systems, pre-configured service validation rules and ability to mask PII and sensitive data, provide service transparency to CNIB and business banking customers through published SLA reports, and built specifically to enhance and enrich the existing FSO financial service operations application for CINIB or CNIB business banking. All right, no screenshots on this one, and that's what's new from the team at Deloitte Technology SA. Next up on the list is going to be Risk Quantifier, or parentheses RQ, by Threat Connect. Enable better decision making with market leading risk quantification. Key features ServiceNow customers will now be able to seamlessly calculate their financial risk to cyber attacks and see which controls should be improved based on the greatest financial risk. We have screenshots on this one. First up is the Risk Workspace screenshot showing a risk risk of my PXI records getting lost, and in the details tab it has some financial information, one of which, no two of which, no I'm sorry, four of which, down there at the bottom, is RQ inherent ALE, inherent SLE, and residual ALE, and residual SLE. So that's that first screenshot. Next one is going to be the uh, RQ mitigations. We've got a list of existing or list of mitigations and their existing status and recommended status. So they're all non-compliant, but they're on trying to get compliant. And then it's sorted by the inherent ALE reduction financial value, uh, showing that how much that risk would be reduced um, if the or the inherent risk would be reduced if that is moved from non-compliant to compliant. Next up is a list of, no, it's just the two screenshots. So there's not no next up, there's not a next up, and that is it. That's what's new from the team at Threat Connect Incorporated. Last on our list of new releases is Vivid Sheets. Pre-process your ServiceNow data for automated operational reporting in a spreadsheet-like experience. Key features, Vivid Sheets offers a spreadsheet-like UI that enables users to create metrics and KPI calculations to use with their automated operational reporting and data visualizations. Provides a set of functions called Vivid Functions that enable users to use a familiar experience to aggregate their ServiceNow data with the resulting value. Each Vivid function is supported with immediate syntax helpers along with in-app supporting notes with examples and definitions. Mathematical functions allow users to take values from other cell inputs in Vivid function results to do calculations and processing of their metrics. Sharing your sheet with other users and stakeholders is simple via the sharing features, basic value and style formatting of your values, and export your sheet's collected results to either Excel or CSV formats. We have screenshots here. First up is going to be Vivid Sheets um, and uh, look list a, a menu on the left and then some an interface on the right for my sheets, sheets that are shared with me and creating a new sheet. And then there's some Vivid Chart stuff on the bottom and some learn more buttons and a button to create a new sheet. That's important. Um, and then once creating, oh wow, it does look like an Excel spreadsheet. Um, so they're showing a what looks like an Excel spreadsheet 
and there's a formula being typed in called equals vivid, like you would in Excel, equals whatever, and then there's vivid count, sum, average, max, min, count, distinct, sum, minus, multiply, divide, and average. So that's pretty cool. Um, literally a spreadsheet in service now. Uh, next one is a zoom in on the spreadsheet that looks like it was building. They're going to do a vivid count. So they're actually in the formula on the cell in the spreadsheet and there's a little flyover or a pop-up of the help information uh, for vivid count the function uh, pretty cool there that doesn't even happen in my excel workbooks uh, next up is the configuration for vivid sheets so roles uh, user manager usage uh, stuff like that and then we're back to the original screenshot that I showed you first so that's what's new from the team at vivid charts LLC and that concludes our new releases which leaves us with four highlights for the episode let's check those out first up expander configuration compliance was updated to version 2.0.1 and in this one it is a major application update to use expander v2 alerts and attack surface rules so that is what's new from the team at Palo Alto Networks. Next up, Flexera integration was updated to version 5.1.322. And in this one, they have new features and updates. Let's see if we can move through here. Under general improvements, Coalesce updated to be independent of computer ID, correlation ID, and Flexera unique ID. For platform support, they're now supporting the Vancouver release of ServiceNow. The Coalesce updated to be independent of computer ID. That's what I just read. Um, so we'll move on down. <laughs> That's the same thing I just read. Uh, Non-IRE and FNMS transform maps. Matching rules for non-IRE and FNMS transform mapping for Coalesce now consider the serial number from the computer table, the serial number from the serial number table, the Fluxera unique ID, and the name. Um, and then down below that, IRE transform maps. For IRE transform mapping, the priority of flex area unique CI rule moved from 50 to 250 so that the serial number and serial number type are checked before the flex area unique ID. And that, oh, wait, 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 there's some bug fixes too. Um, so once you go take a look at those, I'm not going to read all of these bug fixes, but there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, very detailed bug fixes that are also included in this release uh, and this update to Flexera. And uh, that's what's new for the team at Flexera Software Incorporated. Next up is VBrick Video Connector, updated to version 1.4.0. And in this version, they have native content publishing and employee center integration, additional options for authenticating and authorizing ServiceNow users with VBrick. And that's what's new from the team at VBrick Systems Inc. Last on our list of highlights is going to be Zero Fox. Zero Fox was updated from or updated to version 2.1.1. And in this version, they've added bi directional communication between ServiceNow and Zero Fox, such as take action on alerts, close, request takedown, etc., update alert tags, and update alert notes. And that, my friends, is our last highlight for this episode. Let's take a, one more look at what you just saw or heard. We have had seven new releases, four highlights, four compatibility updates, seven minor updates, eight fixes, and seven release notes fails. I hope you found this video or podcast helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested in what's new and what got updated in the ServiceNow store. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.